Today we're reviewing the giant brown box from LG. No, oh wait, there's something else in this. There's a heat pump dryer that is ventless in this. Uh, let's go ahead and take it open and see what's inside. This is brand new, no reviews on it whatsoever. I don't know what's going to happen, so let's get to it. I want to let everyone know that it's not sponsored by uh, Home Depot or LG or anything else, so let's see what terrible things we can find in this package. Unpacking the unit is like many other appliances, but once you get the box totally moved away, you do have some interesting different things inside. You get this small baby drain hose and a very thick manual with a lot of important things you can do with your new heat pump dryer. Inside the unit, it absolutely doesn't look like a normal dryer. All the holes in the unit make this look like a giant washing machine, and if it wasn't for the filter of the very front unit, you would be absolutely mistaken that it is. So we start the journey on this video, not at the front of the dryer, but the back. The thing that makes this unique is that it is ventless, meaning there is no giant ducted metal vent that protrudes from the back of this. So you can put this dryer in a whole lot of different places than you would normally. The next thing about this unit that is very interesting is the fact that it is a heat pump dryer, meaning there is a compressor in this that more or less dehumidifies the clothes to get them dry. And the third thing about it is that unlike a lot of other ventless dryers, there's no large catch tray in this unit. This unit drains all the water that gets away from your clothes into your drain line, just like your washing machine would. So it, it's really, really unique to start this out. But there's a lot more to this dryer that most people aren't going to talk about. So we're going to tear it apart, do a lot of different tests on this because again, First in the world to do this, not because I'm special. I paid $1,300 for this and I want to get my money's worth so you can get your money's worth too. So let's look at some more things. Unlike the other heat pump systems that we've discussed on the channel, this one does require a 220 volt outlet in the American version. So pay attention to that when installing this, use a strain relief for the longest life of the terminal block. Once you have that done on boot up, you'll get the request to use the LG Think app and also clean the filter after every load. The unit has about 10 different drying features on boot up, including normal, bedding, AI, and power dry, among others. You can add multiple other modes to the unit through the option menu as well. If you have Wi-Fi available, you can install the Think app, which will give you extra options and capabilities for this dryer. And if you watch my other video on the LG 2-in-1, I already had this app installed on my phone, so part of the process was done, it did take some time to sync the dryer with the Wi-Fi and the phone correctly. I had to restart the phone and the dryer, I think, to get this done, but once it was installed, it went flawlessly through every test that we did. The app has a lot of good features. It has remote start, adding different cycles to the machine's default setup, an online manual for the unit, some sort of diagnosis mode, and then a watt meter to show you how the unit operates on a general level. To test the dryer, you really need a washer, so I'm bringing back my LG 2-in-1 washer-dryer combo to the test room, but I'm using it literally as just a washing machine. As you can see here, the measurements between both units are identical. The dryer measures 27 inches wide, 39 inches tall, and about 32 and a half inches deep, so it's nearly identical to the LG washer combo beside it. It's also at 165 pounds. Now, talking about the heat pump, you do need about five inches of clearance behind the unit, so you don't want to press it directly against a wall because it does need some air to recirculate. Going to the baby drain pump, you need to ensure your stand pipe can support both a standard washer drain hose as well as this baby drain hose or whatever you're using to drain the water out of the dryer. The heat pump dryer hose is about five eighths of an inch, and this fits very well with the standard water vent hose and a two inch stand pipe. Unlike some of the foreign units of this, there's no catch tray for water. It has to be pumped or caught in some way. You theoretically could even use just a gallon jug to catch all the water in. Finally, let's go ahead and dry some clothes. For the first load, we're testing a nine and a half pound mixed load of clothes, mostly shirts and thinner items, but a hoodie or two in the unit. Water extraction on your washing machine is important. The less water your clothing has in it, the faster the dryer is going to work. So we typically use high or very high modes in the front load washer. If you use a top load washer with this dryer, do expect worse drying times. Top loads will not extract as much water by nature. Unloading the clothes from the washer, we find that there's about three pounds of water that got added. Loading the heat pump dryers like any others, 
other than the fact that this unit does have a monster capacity that makes the laundry load look very small and this could probably handle 25 pounds of dry clothes if you needed it to. There are many modes that you can use, but we're just going to use the normal test to see what happens. The unit takes a while to sense, but once it finally comes out of that, it shows a runtime of two hours, which is quite a bit, but with the sensors, it probably will adjust. Since doing some of the last tests, I installed an Emporia energy monitor into our system to show how the dryer uses wattage. It allows us to see exactly how this unit uses wattage, and although we can only see one leg of power being used, it's already using more wattage than the typical two-in-one unit did as it has a larger heat pump system. Also, while we're at it, we should talk about noise. The dryer averages only about 60 to 61 decibels running. I don't have a tumble dryer in here to compare it to yet, but it's very, very quiet, but we will run head-to-head -head tests in upcoming videos just to see if this is actually more quiet than what I think tumble dryers are. With the first load of clothes done, these feel much different than the other heat pump dryers that we've used in the past. This has zero moisture around them, much like a tumble dryer. One issue that we've seen with the GE and LG units is that they come kind of damp from the heat pump dryers and if you shake them, they dry out. This was not the case in this unit at all in any test that we did. Also as a note about dry times, we had that stated initial two hours, but it actually finished in about one hour and 40 minutes using 950 watts of electricity. Although you may care about drying times a lot, your app features, what I really care about are the condenser coils because this is what will make or break the unit. And unlike the two-in-one combo condenser coils, these are at the very bottom of the dryer, which is different and takes a little bit of getting used to. You have to press in on this access door, then adjust the locks toward the center and that will let you access the coils. From here, you can see these larger blue coils which look a lot more like the GE two-in-one unit than the LG immediately to our right. These are directly behind the housing, making them very easy to clean with a vacuum cleaner, but harder to do a deep servicing as a technician. The coils look very robust and unlikely to be damaged if you use a coil brush or a vacuum cleaner. Next, the filter is much larger than any of the other heat pump systems we've tested, and it's easy to remove this inner filter from the housing. The filter cannot be cleaned from the outside. It needs split apart in the middle, the unit actually has three filter sides to it, a front, a rear, and then this small middle strip that it will need to be separated to get all the nooks and crannies. You can tell that LG took lint way more seriously on this unit than the two-in-one unit. The surface area to capture lint is way more robust. There's also a secondary filter in the housing that LG suggests that you clean every 10 loads. I'll have a separate video to discuss this and some of the other cleaning tips as there's some amazing features in this regard. My goal with this machine is to put it through every kind of load test that would be logical. So next, let's put some bedding in the washing machine. It's a mix of towels and blankets that we used in one of our last videos. It's about 12 and a half pounds dry and 16 pounds wet. Loading this bedding cycle into the dryer, the initial run time for these blankets and towels is three hours and 15 minutes. Depending on your goal with the heat pump dryer, this could sound extreme or reasonable. This unit does again feature delayed and remote starts, so you could run the unit literally whenever you want to at night or when you are at work, coming home to being able to pull it out as soon as you get home so it can work on your time. The unit ended up running for two hours and 55 minutes. It came in a little bit better than expected, but the one thing that's very interesting about this is the LG app and energy meter that we have the cycle actually ended way earlier than two hours and 55 minutes. With 20 minutes left, I caught it running the auto condenser care cycle, meaning that it was working to clean the coils at the end of the cycle. At any rate, the towels came out extremely dry, and even according to the scale, it seems like they dried out more than even before we measure them in the wash. Since we're able to run two loads at once, we're going to go ahead and start a test for a comforter as well to see how this works. It was one of the more difficult tests we had on the heat pump units. Yet again, when we put this in, the unit sets a default bedding cycle to three hours and 15 minutes, and it's a good thing we have two units so I can test more and more loads quicker on this, since we wanna take it apart later to look for failure points. In the end, the comforter with two sheets required two hours and 37 minutes of drying time. This was pretty disappointing given that the GE ran quite a bit faster, but all the tests have had absolutely dryness, which the GE definitely did not have in its much faster cycle. One thing that I want to point out also about drying times is the ambient temperature of your washroom. Unlike a tumble dryer, the temperature of your room matters quite a bit. 
If it's too cold, you will see increased drying times. Additionally, if you want to run multiple loads consecutively, the dryer will end up ramping up its drying times, going faster and faster, getting your clothes done quicker and quicker. Proper ambient temperatures need to be roughly about 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius for optimal drying times. If you go below 60 degrees Fahrenheit, you're going to see worse and worse drying times. For the next five loads, I decided to run a data logger talking about heat in the dryer to check the cycles using this same 10 and a half pound clothing mix that we are going to use on different drying speed settings to see what happens. There's echo, normal, and speed dry settings on the normal mode. This is the chart of the four cycles that we ended up running and then the labels for them. You can see that the temperature varies quite a bit based on mode and the drying times varied from about one hour and 30 minutes up to about one hour and 45 minutes for echo but the temperature in the room did vary a little bit between these tests. I think the speed setting would have been a little bit more superior had the room been the same temperatures each time. In the process of running the same load of clothes half a dozen times, I was trying to test the various response times for the dryers and put as much strain on the lint and condenser filters as possible. I also ran a power dry cycle, which makes no sense. It ended up running the unit for two and a half hours on essentially a timed dry. It used a ton of wattage, and it does show that this mode is probably best reserved for your absolutely largest wet loads. I probably should have used this for the bedding load. It probably would have done a better job. Finally, off camera due to some issues, I ran two loads on the AI dry setting. First with the bedding, which completed the cycle in one hour and 20 minutes and it came out slightly damp. And then the same 11 and a half pound mixed load, which ran for one hour and 33 minutes, which was similar to the normal settings. Okay, so we've gotten through, I don't know how many loads of clothes so far. I think we're nearing about two dozen dries on this machine, as well as legitimate wash and dries. We're not just throwing a load of uh, dried clothes in there and just forcing it to run. These have been uh, almost two months of washes if they were at a house. So where are we at so far on this? The drying times on the units have been as low as about an hour and 20 minutes on a small load. The average 11 and a half pound load we've done comes in at about one hour, 35 minutes. The bedding and towels are quite a bit worse. And my impression on the drying times is they're a little bit longer than I've expected from this machine, given the fact it's a dedicated 220 volt heat pump. However, the huge difference between this machine and the two-in-one combo we have beside us, as well as the GE ultra-fast combo unit, is that when you pull the clothes out of this, they're actually fully dry. There's no shake them a little bit and then they get uh, totally dry. They're just bone dry like they came out of a tumble dryer. And on top of this, the reason that I think this is happening is when I've observed the drying cycle on the unit is that there's about a 15 to 20 minute cool down cycle on the unit that is called the auto condenser care system. And I believe what's happening here is it's pulling out the moisture from the cabin and then using that to clean the coils. Now the LG combo allegedly has the same features, but regardless, Whatever it's doing in this machine is working really well because we have no lint on the coils after almost two months of homeowner use. That is a far cry from the GE or the combo unit beside me. That's the biggest concern I have as a technician on either of these machines. And there are a lot of complaints from people about having to clean the coils. Well, so far we've seen maybe one strand of lint on this after all these washes, which is amazing. And if we needed to clean the coils, it's a straight access from the bottom for a vacuum cleaner, meaning it's a whole lot easier to deal with. And on top of it, you have a dedicated condenser coil wash cycle where you put a liter of water in this and let it just run and agitate and clean the coils. And I find that to be amazing. Other than the length of time, everything about this unit is just really, really good. But to be sure, we need to take this unit apart and see what's on the inside to look for failure points. So let's go ahead and get the washer moved and then get inside this and see what we can find if I can get it apart because I have no clue what I'm doing. Since I began the video at the back of this dryer, it's only fair that we start the tear down here as well since the heat pump dryer has a nifty secret behind it. LG decided to go with a direct drive brushless DC motor instead of a traditional motor and belt combination. There are a few advantages with this. 
First off, it eliminates the need for a belt and idler system, which means fewer moving parts. It also means that the dryer can reverse direction effortlessly, which tends to be a very complex affair on systems with standard belt-driven dryers. And finally, for those really interested in it, it uses a pressed bearing to hold the shaft into place, making it replaceable if it ever goes bad. I do prefer this style system over dryers using felt or bearing glides, which tend to wear down quite a bit after a short period of time. Now let's go ahead and tear the rest of this unit down to get to the sealed system. As a note, this unit came out just two or three weeks before I made the video. No manuals or teardown guides exist, so wish me luck. There is no belt to shred and replace, and it just looks really odd. This is great because replacing heat pump belt dryers is a horrible task that requires far more work than a standard dryer. Just ask a Bosch technician. I'm honestly not sure if I'm tearing this down the right or wrong way. So if any LG technician sees this, I apologize. But if I was to be honest, for the most part, this comes apart like most LG washers or dryers do. And here's our first checkpoint with the front off. You can see a few wires in the bulkhead and it may be similar to a condenser dryer, but I haven't seen one of those in so long. So if you are in Europe or Asia, let me know if the front bulkhead looks different or similar to what you have. This is where I started to have some difficulties with the teardown and had to look for some online help. The sides are similar to the DLHC1455, which is an older condenser dryer that I never actually dealt with before. If you are a homeowner or service tech, removing these sides allow you to access most of the systems underneath without taking the difficult time of removing the bulkhead and drum. With the panels removed, you can access some of the critical components like the filter, housing, the dryer control board, the compressor, and if you move the control board out of place, you can access more things like the drain and recirculation pump system on this side, and the other side just has the condenser that is not removable yet. To access that condenser, which is the key to the review, we have to go quite a bit deeper, taking out the drum and bulkhead. These are the last two parts that were kind of difficult to do because I had no idea what I was doing and did not want to damage anything. The drum was the worst part and I lost some filming here as I ran out of battery power. There was a metal cover that we had to remove off camera to get to these th six screws that you see on the back of the drum for the dryer, but once I figured that out, the hardest part was essentially done. Now we can get to the only part that I honestly care about in a review like this is the condenser coils because we need to inspect the housing and see what over a month of use does. Okay, so we are in the very bottom of the unit. So I gotta like sit down to show you guys this, but this is why I do these reviews because I don't know what I'm going to get into. You don't know what I'm going to get into. What you're looking at is the heat pump system, about a month, month and a half, almost two months of what would be considered normal home owner use. Looking at this to determine points of failure is very critical because you're paying $300, maybe even $400 more for this over a standard tumble dryer. And the question that needs to be asked, is this system going to be reliable? Although it's impossible to say exactly how good this system will be for the future, I can tell you without a doubt, they've structured this in a very, very good way. At least when you get this open, the coils, the evaporator and condenser coils are very easy to look at, to repair, to take care of. Obviously the front access gives you the ability to vacuum and clean everything out. When we took it apart again with this much use, there was literally one small piece of lint that made it past the filter, which is superior far beyond the GE heat pump unit we've used or the two-in-one LG, which is right off a of camera. So. This is always my biggest concern with any sort of heat pump unit is the more lint you get in it, the more it degrades and the less it's going to dry your clothes. The heat pump is going to take longer to work so it puts more stress on your system leading to a lower lifespan. The system here is very brilliant. You can see right here, I have the top of the condenser cover, but if you notice that there's channeling here and just below it, there is a recirculation pump that pulls water from the tub and then uses that to spray on the coils. Now, where this system ends up being far superior to the other units we've seen is that condenser care feature that requires you to dump that one liter of water into the front of the system right here where your filter would be. It goes in through the very bottom of the coils to the recirculation pump that's right here. 
it's at the very bottom of this unit. It sucks that clean water up and then we'll use the channels right here to spray water throughout the coils and clean not only the coils, but the bottom of the unit to try to remove mold, dirt, any other things that could build up particles. My question for LG on this is if you can use things that are not just standard water, such as citric acid, a fresh, our wash bomb system we have, bleach, or other slightly more caustic chemicals to recirculate through this and possibly do even more good or damage the coils. I'm not sure. I'm going to email LG about this and if they get back to me, I will put something in the notice about it. Uh, off camera here, I will move this away. We have the LG rotary compressor here. This is a EST102 MBA heat pump system. Um, it is a rotary compressor from LG, which means that it's not the linear compressor that has been giving everyone fits. It's an upsized version of what is on their two-in-one combo. This has a cooling capacity of about 5,100 watts. It's about 50% larger than the LG system, but as far as I can tell, it's smaller than the GE, which makes sense because the drying time wasn't quite as aggressive as the GE. Why is it so small? I'm not sure why they did that. I would have preferred a larger unit, especially on the fact it's 220, but I'm not the engineer that built the system, so I don't know why that would have been the case. With everything done, I guess the question at this point with everything being taken care of is, is this unit gonna be reliable? Let's look at the warranty. LG has a one year parts and labor on everything warranty, which the government requires you to, but the key here is to notice that the unit does have a 10 year sealed system warranty on it. The compression system, uh, the condensers and everything are warrantied for 10 years, which tells me LG at least thinks that this unit's going to run quite some time. The motor behind the unit is also uh, warrantied for 10 years. I really like the fact that there is that direct drive motor on this. I wish every dryer had it because not only are they reliable, there's no belt on this system, so there's one less moving part. And also the bigger advantage is that it's going to be able to run forward and backward to be able to tumble dry your clothes in a more efficient way than a standard belt dryer will be. Uh, some companies have used reverse tumble systems and they end up requiring double idler pulleys or other gimmicks to get it to work properly. And the brushless DC motor does the same thing in a much more efficient, easy package. Um, even tearing down the unit to where you see what you see was not super hard other than getting the cover off the drum. So with all of these things said, is the dryer going to probably be worth it? Would I buy this? Um, well, I bought it, whether I like to or not. I probably am gonna put it back together and take it home and use it and have it replace my other dryer. Ultimately, it comes down to if you can handle the drying times on this, which an hour and a half to two hours, I think is going to be standard. It's going to save you a lot of money. Um, if you look at the fact that it's going to use about one and a half less kilowatts to dry your clothes per cycle, that saves between 20 and 30 cents per cycle. And according to LG, they're targeting this system to last about 12 years before it needs to be replaced. And again, with a 10 year seal system, that sounds about right. If you can get 12 unit years out of this unit without having to deal with a sealed system, I think it makes quite a bit of financial sense over maybe even more reliable units like a Speed Queen because you're going to save so much money on electricity, it ends up paying for itself and paying for the replacement down the road. Is that really the truth though? I don't know. We're going to bring a Speed Queen dryer in the room and test it head to head against this because they're both $1,300. Um, but I, I do think that this may be the king of dryers, but again, it has to challenge the queen to make sense. I will have links for it in the description to this DLHC5502 if you wanna buy it and support the channel. Um, but at least now you know what this dryer is really made of, and at least you can make, at a minimum, a better choice on your drying unit. Is it complex? Yes. Is there a lot of extra parts in it? Yes, because there's you know the pump system in it. But one final thing I wanna say about this is, this type of unit's been available in Korea for years now, and they seem to think that it's a pretty decent unit. It's obviously new to America. We're definitely on the starting stages of heat pump dryers, 
Whether I like it or not, I think heat pump dryers are going to be more and more popular. I wouldn't be surprised if the government regulates tumble dryers out of existence in my lifetime. I'll probably keep my tumble dryer and just tell Biden that I lost in a boating accident, but I may just take this home and use it because I do like the coil wash system in this. It is the best on the market. And I think that whenever you decide to buy a heat pump dryer, that's your number one question. Does it have a coil wash system in it? If it doesn't, I would avoid it like the plague, but if it has something like this where you can see the channels and it clearly does a great job, then it's going to be good and it's worth the $1,300. Um, and that's it for the video, guys. I hope you have a great day. Bye. How am I going to put this together?